What is going on everybody? We're back in the shop today because we're gonna make some camber arms for the race car. Now, very brief history, if you're not familiar with the race car, I swapped an entire rear subframe out of a 2015 Mustang into it. So you can see here, uh, so it's got the IRS set up. Uh, here's a set of our vertical links that we make for um, the S550 chassis. But the camera arm, it's already out, it goes from that tab right there to here. Here's the OEM piece. Now this OEM piece is almost five pounds. This thing's pretty stout. And the amount of curve that's in it is because on a normal S550, the subframe kind of sits much more tucked into the chassis. And the curve of these need to clear the frame rail or, you know, chassis, unibody, you know, whatever you want to call it. But on the race cars you just saw, that subframe stuffed in that chassis stuff's a little different. So we could just do a straight shot. So it's going to be pretty easy. We're going to have some rod ends here. Now I was thinking about doing like a double adjuster setup, but that's going to be a little more complicated than it's worth. This is the cone spacer, which would be this piece right here. <clears throat> this piece is out of our vertical links that I showed you earlier. So we already have this surface, this angle, this face and everything, but we need to make a new one because it needs to be offset just a little bit differently. Um, and obviously the size of the rod end that it goes into is a little bit different. And we've already been messing around on fusion. So here's the rod end. Uh, let me put a different color on that because that's kind of so here is our here's a section view you can kind of see so we got the rod ends let's get rid of this um we can get rid of analysis view so there's the whole piece right there a little hard to see because i have this set as aluminum uh, let's see mean like good appearance let's do a an analyze anodized blue there we go now i already set the material for these as steel and these as aluminum and if we take the whole thing right click it and oops sorry not that one click properties uh you can see the <clears throat> stuff that we have on it uh mass 20 there you go 20 ounces now we will have the spacers which aren't modeled yet so so let's call it a pound and a half, 24 ounces, versus the factory ones, which are like four, a little over four and a half. There was like four pounds, 10 ounces. So nine minus the three. So that'll be like a six pound saving. We're gonna get rid of the rubber bushings. I think there's some of the last rubber bushings on this car. You get rid of the bind in the bushings. Because again, <clears throat> these rubber bushings don't rotate. So when the suspension articulates, you're actually getting some basically like an induced spring rate from the rubber bushings. So we'll finally get rid of those. So it'll kind of be a win all around. The, let's see, the actual manufacturing of it, uh, that's probably what we're gonna cover more in the video. Uh, we're gonna use some manual lathe, CNC lathe, and CNC mill, probably not manual mill. So it'll be a kind of like a little overview of handful of processes i guess but anyways yeah uh, i think that's about it uh, as far as the race car goes uh, i'm trying to remove some weight out of it this is the bucket of crap that i took off because if you follow me more for the racing stuff i did much better at mid ohio than uh gingerman <clears throat> but the dyno was also reading quite low and if you work out the math i was probably like 250 pounds overweight uh we're about like 20 22 horsepower short of where i could be so anyways removing some weight you know is one way to kind of get me a little bit closer um i'm gonna try and get i'm gonna try and get the ability to tune that thing uh or at least have like a couple maps that i could put in which would be kind of cool uh but that's a whole nother thing so anyways let's jump into making these control arms All right guys, so op one, we're just gonna face this off. Just let it auto feed in. Up. 
And I'm gonna make three of these arms. Uh, the reason I'm making three, just in case while I'm making them, I mess something up or wanna change something or break a tap, whatever. I'm gonna flip it and I'm gonna get these to exact length in the manual. Uh, so that way when I go onto the CNC, it's like I can just go off of that face. Uh, basically the only thing we're doing on the lathe is drill and tapping it. Um, you could do it on the manual. CNC makes it a lot easier. <laughs> All right, so now that my blanks are cut to length, we gotta put flats on it like I already did to this guy right here. Um, <clears throat> now, alternatively, I could have just started with uh, a hex bar, um, but I'm kind of using what I have, so that's kind of why I'm doing it this way. In order to get those flats on it, I have a 5C collet block here. So what you do is you just put your stock in it, and then you just like rotate it between each flat. I got a tool path that comes in, does a side, rotate it, side, rotate it, done. <clears throat> so gotta knock those out. Um, then on to the lathe to drill and tap. All right guys, so now that all the flats are on all three of them, uh, we're gonna hop over to the lathe. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drill the hole in each end, and on what one is gonna be the left-hand side, we're gonna put a little groove to denote, you know, that's the left-hand side. So that way when it's on the car, you know which bolt to spin which way. This is where it's gonna be a little bit uh, funny. There, there's definitely a smoother workflow, um, but my stubby drill bit here isn't the size we need. I don't have a stubby the exact size. And since this is a camber arm, I don't wanna use like the closest neck size up because I kinda want the threads to be, I don't know, just have as much material in there as possible. Um, so what we're gonna do is drill it with this stubby and then come in with the boring bar to put it right on dimension, you know, within a thou or two, should be easy enough. Now the next funny thing is I only have one ER20 collet holder. Um, I do have one big enough, um, here's the tap that we're gonna be using. Um, I do have one uh, the size I need for that tap. Problem is, uh, it's already being used on this drill. So <clears throat> this is kinda one of those funny, I'm kinda doing what I got with what I got at the moment. Um, I just ordered another ER20 collet holder <laughs> uh, for the lathe, but um, sometimes you just gotta do it the way you have the stuff on hand for. Um, so what we're gonna do, then when we pop them out, we'll just put it on the manual here, um, tap it, at least get the tap started straight on here and then we can finish by hand, it'll be easy enough. All right, so let's see how good we can see this. It's gonna swap to the boring bar. <clears throat> now the boring bar, as you see, it's doing a whole bunch of vertical passes. So you can see the tool path that it's taken. <clears throat> now it would be nice to just like go straight through two, three passes, whatever we could do. But that first pass, the amount of chips that get jammed into a hole that deep, um, I've done it in the past and it'll like kind of bind up or not sound great. So just a whole bunch of vertical passes as it goes into the hole, and then it'll come through to its final pass. And right, so here it is doing its uh, finish pass on the ID. See the tool movement here. Now it's gonna to switch to the parting blade and put that groove in it. Now this is a new tool path, so I'm gonna slow it up a bit just to make sure. I think it looks good. There you go, done. All right, and we're gonna be looking for about a 572 on this ID. 
and I've done a couple of these at this point. <laughs> uh, we're looking at 570, what's that, three, three and a half, so yeah, plenty good. Now we're gonna tap under power on the uh, manual lathe here. Um, you can see our setup, uh, a little bit of tap magic on here, definitely help out. And then this is just going to be free floating. Oops. And we'll go to about 250 RPMs. Good enough. And I'm going to shuffle hands and keep my hands on the stop button once we get going. There we go, stalled it out. So a lathe this size isn't particularly meant to do this, um, but that's a fresh tap, so it's actually going almost full depth in one shot. Again, the lathe would be nice because you can actually tell it to like, you know, peck, do it in like three progressions or something, as well as it's much more powerful. Um, but yeah, I'll unthread this. Make sure we have enough thread depth um, and we should be good because you can see the other ones here that are, oops, the other ones here are already done. So, yeah, we'll get these done. Left hand taps uh, and then we pretty much just got to bolt everything together. All right, guys, so here it is, all finished up. So the OEM versus ours. There you go, you see the, the cone spacer. Um, <clears throat> now I did weigh it, uh, four pounds, 10 ounces, one pound, 10 ounce. So three pounds each side, Yeah, that's six pounds total. It's right about what I was thinking. Um, we're gonna go ahead, get them installed, um, do an alignment, and this project is done.